Hello there, this is a follow-up tutorial to a previous tutorial which I did that shows you how to get audio up and running in your games or graphics applications. This applies to all 2D games, all 3D games, it's an independent audio module. The initial tutorial, which I've put a link to in the description, shows you how to download and configure that audio module, it's the SFML audio module. This tutorial shows you how to get the 3D spatial surround sound effects out of that module. The first tutorial just gets everything up and running and installed, but we've just got a plain rectangular window, but it doesn't in any way involve 3D spatialization effects or show you 3D graphics models on the screen, such as I'm going to be showing you a helicopter and an aeroplane, which I've drawn in Blender, the 3D modeling software, there are two tutorials really that I've integrated together, the OpenGL model loading part one tutorial and the one I just mentioned, the SFML audio module tutorial. I've kind of combined them together. They are quite minimal tutorials, so there's not too much going on. I've put a link to both of those tutorials in the description. The only thing that's different is I've slightly stripped away some of the code and we have got additional code just here which is just a few lines of the GLM maths library which we use to manipulate the rotation and position of the two models in this case it's a helicopter and an aeroplane and that's pretty much the only additional code apart from set position and set direction for the listener and also set min distance which is this one and set attenuation those four controls within the audio module are the four main controls that we're going to be using to get us the 3D stereo surround sound effect that I've just mentioned. I'll go further down the screen now just to show you what we had in the while loop. Nothing really going on, just a basic transformation just here and also the two for loops which draw the models and communicate with the shaders. So now let's run the first example. Straight away then we can hear a positive increase in volume as the plane orbits around the front of the helicopter. It's louder, quieter, louder, quieter. The helicopter's initial position is minus 10 into the screen. I've also set a heli direction vector based on the helicopter's matrix and we're using GLM Mat 3 so that we disregard the positional change that the helicopter might undergo. So for example, at the moment, it's been sent into the screen. We could move that into any position within 3D space, but we don't want the position translation transformations to affect the direction vector. So we just extract the top three by three part of the matrix using this GLM Mat 3 and then apply that three by three part of the matrix, the rotation part, we multiply that by this GLM VEC3, which contains the default direction of the listener of the audio module, which is minus one on the Z, and that is into screen. And for the plane, we're just setting its position. We've got the plane's initial position at 11 on the Y axis. So the plane is starting up at the top of the screen. We translate the matrix for the plane by that value that moves it to the top before we enter the while loop. Then once we enter the while loop, we translate the plane back down to center. We rotate it and then we translate it back along its own local axis. What I want to show you next is if we change the direction of the listener. So I'm going to make the helicopter point over to the right, which is the same as if I'm looking over to the right, whereas now it's equal in both ears. So if you've got headphones on now, you will hear the volume going up and down equally in both ears. So let's stop this and just rotate the helicopter to the right, which we can do by uncommenting this line. So that's definitely working in that we're getting the sound in the left speaker as it goes around the back and the right speaker as it comes around the front. But I've got the helicopter set into the screen. So it's kind of 
pulsing louder as it goes round the front. I'm just going to set the helicopter into the centre of the screen. Oh, loads better. Really is. So now let's make it orbit around the z-axis. So we're going to go across the screen instead of what we're doing at the moment, which is orbiting around the x-axis going into the screen. We can do that by going up to the going down to the code in the while loop. And just here, we need to comment this line, uncomment this line, and that's all we need to do. So this represents the z-axis. So we're now going to be going around the z-axis across the screen. Whereas before, we were orbiting around the x-axis. If I just compile this and run it, let's just see where we are. I can clearly hear an increase in volume as the plane orbits around the front of the helicopter and a decrease as it orbits around the back of the helicopter. But it's not very pronounced and that's because the helicopter is in the center of the screen. Now, whereas in the last example, the helicopter had been translated into the screen by I think it was 10 or 11 units, so it pretty much clashed with the orbit. The plane virtually went through the helicopter. We can do the same thing by now translating the helicopter to the right instead of into the screen, and we should get the same effect. Let's do that by moving the helicopter Let's compile 10 units to the right, compile that and run it and see what we get. Let's now rotate the heli so that it's pointing towards us and we'll see what the relative sound difference is when we do that. We can do that by changing the rotation angle of the heli to 180 degrees. It starts off by default pointing into the screen We've rotated it to point to the right, but let's also move the heli back over to the center because that will give us a, a clearer appreciation of the difference. And let's run that and see what we get. Yeah, so as expected, that's backwards. And that's correct because the direction of the listener, which is yourself, in this case it's represented by the heli, is looking out of the screen. And so therefore my stereo is reversed. It's the same as if I'm looking that way and we're getting a reverse effect. It doesn't have to be that the direction of the listener is pointing perpendicular along any of the three axes. It can be that the direction of the listener is pointing at any obscure angle. There is one more thing I want to show you, and that is if we use the camera as the listener. So rather than having the helicopter as the listener, we'll have the camera as the listener, and I'll show you where the camera is. The camera is set at 25 units in 3D space. I know from earlier testing that if I don't reduce the distance that the camera is set out of the screen. Remember that Z minus is into the screen. So we've got 25 for the camera Z position, which is why we're set back looking at the models in front of us. If I don't reduce that value of 25, so I'm going to do that now, I'm going to reduce it to 15 because if we go back into the while loop, we can see that we, no, not in the while loop. If we look at the initial position that we offset the plane, it's 11 and therefore as the plane orbits around the 0000 coordinates at the center of the volume of 3D space, it's only going to reach 11 towards us and we're set 25 back so it's going to be way too quiet. By reducing the camera position to only being 15 back, there's only a difference of 4 so that's going to be much better. We can also take advantage of the set minimum distance. The set minimum distance controls how far away from the listener full volume is maintained. For example, if I change the set min distance value of three to four, it's not gonna make a big difference. It means that me being the listener, the camera, 
now set back 15 because I've just changed it. Four units away from me in every direction is going to still be full volume if the source is within that spherical distance of four units. I nearly forgot we need to change the position of the listener to the camera. We can easily do that. We just copy camera position and paste that in just here like so. And now the listener position is going to be the camera position rather than the helicopter position. So whichever way the heli is pointing is still true to the way that we are looking, but the position of the heli is irrelevant. We also need to change the orbiting of the plane because we want the plane to be swooping around the x-axis like we did before. Let's change this back therefore, comment this line and uncomment this line. And now we're ready, so let's run this. So that's working well. A positive increase in volume as the plane is orbiting around and swooping by the front of the camera, not the heli. Let's just increase the attenuation so it makes it drop off way faster. So now it should drop off much sharper. The volume should become quieter, much quicker as the source travels away from the listener. The attenuation, therefore, is a setting which when the listener and the source are close together, you'll get maximum volume. And then as the source moves away from the listener, the volume drops off at a rate governed by the set attenuation. If the set attenuation is set very high, which in my testing is anything above about three or four, then very shortly after the source moves away from the listener, the listener hears the sound drop sharply. If you set it really low, and again in my testing anywhere between about 0.25 and 1, it makes it much smoother and the volume drops off much more gradually. So at 2.5, we should hear a much sharper drop off. Let's just run this. So that's very apparent compared to the last example. Now we've increased the attenuation. The one other thing I wanted to show you was we don't need to have something orbiting, obviously. What I'm gonna do is comment these three lines. I'm going to uncomment this single line. Therefore, rather than now the plane orbiting around the axes, we are just going to translate it from its initial position, which we know is set to the top of the screen, just here, 11 units. And we are going to drop the plane gradually, moving linearly down the screen at a rate of this movement variable, which I've got set to 0.2. And I want it to bounce back up and down, and therefore I need to enable this if statement. The way that this works is that the play matrix, which is initially set to translate the plane to the top of the screen, is applied to a vertex position at coordinates 0, 0, 0, just here. And therefore, if nothing else happens, that initial 0, 0, 0 position represents where the plane is because it's being translated by that plane matrix, which we've already set. Therefore, if we take that new position as stored in this GLM VEC3 and the plane new POS, the Y value of that vector, if we keep a track of it, it means that we can control when we want to reverse the movement. We also need to make sure that the initial position of the plane doesn't exceed these two values. I've just shown you that it's set to 11. That isn't going to work. We need to reduce that to less than 10. The position just here is still set at camera position. We need to change that back to the heli position. And let's run that. A 
definite difference, but not extremely noticeable. Let's change the minimum distance to one and see what that does. Big difference, way louder as the plane passes through the heli. Let's just speed that up purely for fun. We can do that by increasing this value. Let's go for 0.9 and run that. Yeah, that's just weird, but it's good fun. And now let's make it so that the helicopter, the listener, is pointing downwards and we'll move the plane horizontally and change things as we need to, like so. We shall change the rotation of the heli so that it rotates around the x-axis after rotating around the y-axis. So at the moment, it's 180 degrees around the y-axis, so it's pointing that way. If we now rotate it 90 degrees around the x-axis, it means that it will be pointing downwards. That will take care of that. We also want the plane, because we want to now translate it horizontally across the screen, we need to get rid of this 9, set that to 0, so the initial plane position is at the center, of the screen in terms of the height. We also need to have the movement variable as the X value. And finally, we need to change this to X instead of Y because we want to make it bounce from left to right. And hopefully that's going to work. Let's run that and see what we get. We're getting a sudden change from one ear to the other with the maximum volume still being when the plane intersects through the helicopter. That makes sense because it wasn't passing through the heli in the orbiting examples, it was orbiting around the outside and so we got a smooth transition from stereo left to right. Now the plane is slicing through the heli, we get a sudden change from one ear to the next at the same time that we get the maximum volume. One thing I haven't shown you is in this other window, I've got the coordinates running. And as we can see, I can stop this running. And if we check the maximum and minimum X values, we can see that it gets to 10 before it starts to reverse. And we can also see that it gets to minus 10 before it starts to bounce back the other way. And with that, I will end this tutorial and say that if you found this tutorial interesting, then please give it the thumbs up. And if you found it helpful, then please don't forget to subscribe and hopefully you'll see me next time. Cheers.